All right, 644 this morning on Good Day Orlando. Developing this morning for the first time since the end of America's longest war, the country's top military officials are testifying on the withdrawal from Afghanistan. They appeared before a Senate committee yesterday. They will testify again today. And joining us live now is Congressman Michael Waltz, a retired U.S. Army Green Beret who served in Afghanistan. Congressman, good morning. Good to see you this morning. Hey, good to be with you. Thanks. So conflicting accounts yesterday. Your reaction to what you saw? Yeah, we're seeing a Grand Canyon sized gulf here between uh, the generals uh, and what President Biden has been saying. Biden said uh, that no one advised him that we should leave a stay behind force. The generals are saying, uh, yes, in fact, uh, they did advise him that uh, Biden's saying the war is over. Uh, the generals are saying Al Qaeda is still at war with us. And Biden's saying that, you know, that um, we needed to get out to deal with China. Uh, the generals are saying that we should have stayed. We had an air base right there on China's western border. So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing disconnect after disconnect. And the biggest one that I'm looking to get to is how does this over the horizon counterterrorism work? Now that we have no diplomats, no intelligence agencies, no troops, no bases, and no local allies anywhere near. Uh, where half the world's terrorist organizations exist. And that leaves America far less safe. And I don't want to wait, Ryan, until we have another Pulse nightclub, another San Bernardino, or God forbid, another 9-11. I'm not going to wait for the rise of the ISIS caliphate, like what happened under the Obama-Biden administration uh, uh, just some years ago. And what I fear the most is that American troops are going to have to go back uh, to deal with that when that happens if this over the horizon counterterrorism doesn't work. You had some strong words on Twitter saying the president lied when he said the military backed that withdrawal to zero troops in Afghanistan. They were asked specifically about that. What did you think about that? And what is the danger moving forward if, if you believe that is the case? Well, we've heard from both uh, the commander of Central Command and uh, General Milley, the top general uh, you know, in our armed forces, that they advise that we leave a small presence focused on counterterrorism and providing that critical support to the Afghan army that they collapsed without. Uh, you know, all at once we pulled away their maintenance support, logistics support, intelligence support, and their air support. And then we're surprised. The White House was surprised when, uh, when they when they folded under such pressure. So the Pentagon clearly uh, advised the president to do something very different than what he actually did. And we need to get to the bottom of why that was. I want to finish with this. There are still conflicting numbers and really limited reporting about how many Americans are left in Afghanistan. What are you hearing on that front? Right. Just yesterday, my office was trying to help through one of these, you know, amazing veterans, grassroots veterans groups that are still in touch with Americans trapped behind terrorist lines. They're an 80 year old couple. Ryan, that is that is trapped and can't get across the border. Uh, there are thousands of Americans, green card holders, legal permanent residents, and tens of thousands of Afghans who stood and took bullets alongside our soldiers. And they are being hunted down by the Taliban, the Haqqani Network, uh, and Al Qaeda as we speak. It is shameful. It's un-American. Uh, it's un-American to leave a fellow citizens behind, and it's un-American to let terrorists dictate the terms of where we go and how we get our citizens out. Are there still those private efforts? We talked to Corey Mills to try and get more of them out. And I know it's an uphill battle. Uh, yeah, there absolutely are. And we're getting very little support uh, from the State Department and none from the Defense Department because they have nothing left there to work with. So, I mean, there are way more than what the State Department's reporting. Uh, they're lying or they are grossly misinformed. Uh, but, you know, one of the fundamental creeds that we learn in the Green Berets and in the military is you never leave a fallen comrade. And we're going to keep going despite the odds uh, to save our fellow Americans. Congressman Walter, really appreciate the update and definitely for your time this morning. Thanks for being on.